Welcome to G Fun Facts Online, where we dive deep into the science behind our amazing universe. Today, we're heading to the moon, but not the side you're used to seeing. We're going to a place of immense violence and enduring legacy, a place shaped by a cosmic collision billions of years ago. This is the story of the moon's South Pole Aitken Basin, a colossal scar that holds the keys to unlocking some of the deepest mysteries of our solar system. To really get why this basin is so important, you first have to understand that the moon has two very different faces. The near side, the one that's always looking at us, is covered in vast, dark, smooth plains called Maria. These are ancient, volcanic fields. But if you could fly around to the far side, you'd see a completely different world. It's rugged, mountainous, and absolutely pummeled with craters. For decades, scientists wondered why this stark difference existed. The answer, it turns out, lies in a single, cataclysmic event from the moon's violent childhood. About 4.3 billion years ago, when the solar system was a chaotic shooting gallery, an asteroid roughly 200 kilometers in diameter came hurtling towards the moon. But this wasn't a direct hit. It was a glancing, oblique blow to the southern hemisphere. The result was the South Pole Aitken Basin, or SPA for short. And when I say it's big, I am not kidding. This is one of the largest and oldest impact craters in the entire solar system. It stretches to 500 kilometers across, that's nearly a quarter of the moon's entire surface, and plunges to depths of over eight kilometers. It's so vast that if it were on Earth, it would stretch from New York City to Denver. From our backyards, we can just barely see its outer rim, a chain of mountains on the moon's southern edge. For a long time, the leading theory was that the asteroid struck from the south and moved north. But recently, detailed analysis of the basin's shape turned that idea completely on its head. When a large object hits at an angle, it creates a specific shape, sort of like a teardrop or an avocado, that gets narrower in the direction the impactor was traveling. In the case of the SPA basin, that teardrop shape points south. This is compelling evidence that the asteroid actually came from the north and slammed into the moon in a southerly direction. This isn't just a trivial detail. Knowing the direction of impact changes everything for geologists trying to understand where the debris went, and for NASA trying to figure out the best place to land. This impact wasn't just a surface scratch. The force was so immense that it blasted away most of the lunar crust in that area, and may have even punched straight through into the upper mantle. It's like a cosmic punch that didn't just leave a bruise, it rearranged the moon's insides. This massive excavation created a natural laboratory. It gives scientists a unique window into the moon's internal structure without ever having to drill. All the material that was blasted out by the impact, known as ejecta, was thrown across the lunar surface. A thick blanket of this deep-seated rock and soil was deposited downrange to the south of the impact site. And this is exactly where NASA's Artemis missions are planning to land. This means future astronauts will be able to walk around and pick up rocks that originated deep within the moon, material that tells the story of the moon's formation and its evolution over billions of years. And what's in that material is already rewriting textbooks. Scientists expected to find rocks rich in a mineral called olivine, which is common in Earth's mantle. Instead, remote sensing data revealed a surprising amount of something called low calcium pyroxene. This discovery challenges the long-held idea that all rocky planets have basically the same kind of mantle. The moon's interior might be far more unique than we ever imagined. The story gets even more fascinating when we connect this giant impact to another of the moon's great mysteries, a strange geochemical component known as CREEP. CREEP is an acronym for rocks that are rich in potassium, rare earth elements, and phosphorus. It also contains heat-producing radioactive elements like uranium and thorium. CREEP is believed to be the last dregs of the moon's primordial magma ocean. Shortly after it formed, the moon was a giant ball of molten rock. As it cooled, 
denser minerals sank to form the mantle, and lighter ones floated to form the crust. Creep was the stuff left over in the middle, a chemically rich layer trapped between the crust and the mantle. The puzzle is, creep is found almost exclusively on the moon's near side, the side facing Earth. This is why the near side has all those huge volcanic plains. The radioactive elements in creep provided a long-lasting heat source that kept the mantle warm and fueled volcanic activity. But why is it all on one side? The South Pole Aitken impact offers a brilliant explanation. The latest model suggests that this colossal impact on the far side was so powerful that it literally squeezed the moon. This pressure wave traveled through the planet and effectively pushed the remaining liquid layer of creep magma towards the opposite side, the near side. The impact essentially consolidated all the moon's volcanic fuel into one hemisphere. We even have evidence of this in the impact site itself. The ejecta blanket on the western side of the basin is rich in thorium, a key creep indicator, while the eastern side is not. This suggests the impact happened right on the edge of a patchy, subsurface creep layer, giving us a fossilized snapshot of the moon's dynamic interior from billions of years ago. So the Sepha Basin is a geological wonderland. But there's another treasure hidden at the South Pole. One that is absolutely crucial for the future of humanity in space. Water ice. Because the moon has only a very slight axial tilt, the floors of some deep craters near the poles are in permanent darkness. They are permanently shadowed regions, or PSRs, where the sun never shines. These are some of the coldest places in the entire solar system with temperatures low enough to trap water as ice for billions of years. Evidence for this water ice has been building since the 1990s, and missions like India's Chandrayaan-1 and NASA's LCROSS have confirmed its presence. The water likely came from two sources, impacting comets and meteoroids carrying ice, and a chemical reaction where hydrogen from the solar wind combines with oxygen in the lunar soil. This discovery is a complete game changer. Water isn't just for drinking, it can be split into hydrogen and oxygen. That gives you breathable air and, crucially, the two primary components of rocket propellant. The ability to mine this ice and use these resources on the moon would slash the cost and complexity of space exploration. It makes a sustainable human presence on the moon and eventual missions to Mars a realistic possibility we could refuel our rockets on the moon for a trip to the red planet. This incredible scientific potential is why the moon's south pole has become the hottest real estate in the solar system. NASA's Artemis program is aiming to land the first woman and the next man right in this region. The Artemis 3 mission will see astronauts walking on the surface, collecting samples of both ancient rock and precious ice. They'll deploy a suite of advanced instruments, the Lunar Environment Monitoring Station, or LEMS, will act as a seismometer to study moonquakes and the moon's internal structure. The LEAF experiment will see how plants grow in the lunar environment. And the Lunar Dielectric Analyzer, or LDA, will measure electrical properties of the ground to map out hidden water ice deposits. But the United States isn't the only country with its eyes on the prize. China's change program has already made history. The Change 4 mission performed the first ever soft landing on the far side of the moon, right inside the SPA basin. Their next major mission, Change 7, is scheduled for 2026 and will specifically target the South Pole to hunt for water. It includes an orbiter, a lander, a rover, and even a small hopping probe designed to jump into those permanently shadowed craters to get a direct look at the ice. Following that, Change 8 will test technologies for using lunar resources, like 3D printing structures with moon dust, all in preparation for building a long-term international lunar research station. The story of the moon's south pole is a powerful reminder that the history of our solar system is written in the language of impacts. The collision that formed the South Pole Aitken Basin was a moment of profound transformation. It sculpted a unique landscape, it tore a hole into the lunar interior for us to study, and it may have been the very event that gave the moon its two distinct faces. Today, that ancient scar is the focal point for a new era of human exploration. The secrets hidden in its shadowed craters 
and the stories locked in its ancient rocks are about to be revealed. We are on the verge of not just rewriting our understanding of the moon, but of taking the next giant leap for humankind. The story of that cosmic collision is far from over, in fact, a new and exciting chapter is just beginning. Thanks for tuning in to G Fun Facts Online.